Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to our information session about our LLM program and the Thomas R. Klein School of Law here at Duquesne University. My name is Joe DeCrosta, and I'm the executive director in the Center for Global Engagement here at the university. Um, we're really happy to be with, he, with all of you here today to um, talk about this new and exciting program, especially designed for international students in our School of Law. Um, first, I'd like you to introduce you um, to the rest of my team here at the university in the Center for Global Engagement, and that is my colleague Sarah Souza, who is the Assistant Director of International Admissions in our office and works with most international students coming through the application process. And our, our Manager of International Admissions, Ed Muldoon, um, who also works with many applicants, especially through uh, some of the agent relationships that we have. So um, I'm also here with the Director of Admissions and our Klein School of Law here at the university, Maureen Stoken, and one of our law professors and former international student here at Duquesne University, Dorothe Langraf. So um, we're really excited to be able to share this information with you today. Um, if we can go back to the agenda. Um, so we're gonna go through um, some information about Pittsburgh in general and about our university. A lot of people are not um, familiar with the Pittsburgh region, but it's a wonderful place to live and study, especially for international students new to the United States. So we're gonna talk to you about that a bit more. And then um, Professor Langraf, Dr. Langraf, is going to um, talk you through the details of the LLM program. And, and then um, Ms. Stoken is going to walk you through the application process as well. Um, we are recording this presentation uh, for future use. So please um, send this to your colleagues and students that may be interested in a program like this. So again, thank you for joining us today. And I'm going to pass on the presentation to my colleague, Sarah, who will talk to you about Duquesne and Pittsburgh. Thank you so much, Dr. DeCrosta. So I first wanna just introduce to you a little bit about what the Center for Global Engagement does here at Duquesne University. So we work with all international students when they come into the university. So any student that's coming to Duquesne from another country, we work with them on immigration. We work with them through the admission process and up through their time here, really. So we're gonna to touch on all of those things in the presentation. But first, I wanted to tell you a little bit about our location because uh, Pittsburgh, you probably heard about, but doesn't mean that you'll be able to locate where we are. We're actually located on the East Coast of the United States, the Northeast uh, sort of midsection to be a little bit more clear. You can see on the map, it's where the star is. And I have highlighted here major cities also on the East Coast that you are probably more familiar with, Boston, New York, Philadelphia, DC. And all of these places are under, uh, under two hours flight for sure, some even shorter. For example, DC is only about 25 minute flight from here or driving about four and a half hours. So we're very well located uh, in, the, in the East, major university area. Uh, Pittsburgh is famous for universities and education. We're also only a 30 minute drive from the airport. So this might not mean a lot to you, but here in the United States, it's quite common that many major universities are located in more rural settings. That is not the case with Duquesne. I can show you here where we are located. So on the right, you'll see that this is the downtown of Pittsburgh, city of bridges. We have a lot of bridges. We have three rivers. It's a great scenic area. And the right arrow, the white arrow to the right is pointing down at where our campus is located. So we are right in the downtown of Pittsburgh, which is great for students. So that means that transportation, very convenient. You do not need to have a car to be here as a student that saves a lot of money and it's still convenient. 
Uh, if you choose to stay in the area of Duquesne, you will be very well located for all of your living needs. And also many students choose to live close within walking or transportation distance to campus and find it to be very affordable, which is something else that we highlight a lot about Pittsburgh, affordability. All of those major cities that you saw on the map that I just showed you, we are at the lowest end of cost of living. So that is excellent for international students. You're able to save money while you study and have an excellent education, an excellent experience, which my colleagues in the law school will be telling you about, but able to save on that cost of living. To the left, you'll see a picture of our campus. So although we're located in an urban setting, we're right downtown. We still have a park-like setting. You can see the green trees. And that's really important when you're studying very hard to have that nice scenery around you. It's, it's what you would imagine an American campus to be like, I always tell students. I just had uh, some German students come up to me when they first came to Duquesne and they said, this is like a, I feel like I'm in a movie about a college campus. <laughs> so it really gives you that feeling, even though we're in the downtown setting. So it's, it's a little bit of the best of both worlds. A little bit more about Pittsburgh. I mentioned we're uh, at a very affordable city, and that's why we've been voted the most livable city in America multiple times. We have a lot to offer. Uh, these are some pictures of highlights from around the city from the arts. Andy Warhol's famously from Pittsburgh, uh, here featuring the, his famous Marilyn Monroe paintings. We are also famous for sports. People love sports here. So if you're an a athletic uh, person, you'll love to take part in, in that sports culture here. Uh, also Heinz Ketchup from Pittsburgh, just kind of a funny thing to highlight. But really, we are formally known as the Steel City. It's still commonly refer referred to Pittsburgh, but we've come a long way from the Steel City. Now we're famous for tech. We're famous for healthcare, and we're very famous for education, home to more than 20 colleges and universities in the Pittsburgh area. So that means that we have many international students that come to Pittsburgh to study just in this about a uh, five kilometer radius. We have tens of thousands of international students because of the schools located in this area, University of Pittsburgh, Duquesne University, Carnegie Mellon University. So it's a great location. You'll find a lot of students like yourself that come here to study from all over the world. And right now we have more than 70 countries represented on campus at Duquesne. So we welcome students from everywhere and we're excited to see students uh, representing countries that we don't have. So uh, my colleagues are gonna tell you a little bit more about how you're able to get here uh, to take part in this program, but we wanted to share those highlights of the city to you first, because we believe that's a real, a real exciting feature of Duquesne University. So turn it over to my colleague, uh, Dr. Dorothy Langruff, and she can tell us more about this LLM program. Uh, thank you, Sarah. Yes, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Dorothy Landgraf, and as you can hear, I'm German, so not native English. And I was a Duquesne client's first uh, LLM for foreign lawyer students back in 2005. And uh, I had, had a wonderful experience, and I obviously liked it so much that I'm now living back in Pittsburgh again. I'm teaching at uh, du Duquesne's Klein Law School as an adjunct professor, and I'm the coordinator for Duquesne's LLM program. So first, I'd like to um, talk a little bit about the law school. Uh, can you move over, Sarah, please, to the next slide? So when you pick an LLM program, of course, you look at the law school because the value of an LLM program depends from the value of the law school. Sarah already introduced you to the campus and uh, where the law school is located. And it's a very beautiful, it's very nice, and um, it's a wonderful atmosphere. So if you ask uh, American students why they apply for Duquesne, then we have uh, the five top reasons why they do apply, which we can see on the next slide, Sarah, please. Thank you. So um, asking U.S. students, they say, yes, a very high, a very important reason is, of course, the employment rate when you finish law school. And this, uh, the rate is 94.2% uh, from the class of 2020, 2021. Another important reason is um, for American students is the bar passing rate. If you're wondering what the bar passing rate means, the bar is the exam you have to take when you finalize a 
law school in the US and this allows you to be admitted to practice as a lawyer. And the bar passing rate is here at uh, Duquesne's Klein Law School over 92%, which actually puts us in the top third of the nation, which is very good and very important for a good law school as well. Um, Sarah already pointed out that we have a very good urban location, which allows Duquesne students to participate in the clinical clinical and internship program, which Duquesne Klein Law School is offering to our law students. So that's about a little bit about the law school itself. And now we will move forward to talk about the LLM programs that we are offering. Oh, first, yes, I wanted to point out um, why the convenient location is very important. Important. Here we have a picture of uh, the law school. You can see where it is with the um, red arrow. And behind the law school, you can see all these taller buildings that are actually several um, courthouses and also law office. So you can participate in externships or clinicals during the day. And just within a short walking distance, you can go back and forward from the campus um, to, to the court or to the law firm and go back to the law school and finish your classes at law school without any bigger interference. Um, so then let's talk about the LLM program a little bit. So what are the reasons to apply for Duquesne Klein's LLM program? First, we offer two different curriculums. One is a general curriculum and the other one is a backtrack curriculum. I will explain you the difference on the next slides in a few minutes. Um, let's talk about the other reasons what makes our program di different and very interesting. Uh, one reason is we have a very modest size. We don't um, accept too many students to keep the program small and to keep the LLM students uh, in the group with all the JD students. What are the JD students? JD students are the American students. JD stands for Juris Doctor degree. So that's a degree that the American students receive at the end of their law school time. And since it's a small program, the LLM students are sitting in the classroom next to the JD students. They are um, introduced in the, in the daily activities of the JD students. They talk English to native American speakers person, and this helps in tremendously to improve the English language and also close relationships to American students. Another reason for uh, the law school is that we have, due to our um, smaller size of the law school, we have a very good um, individual attention with the students and the faculty is very accessible. The professors are always have opening doors, they're welcoming students and they know the students by name. This might be completely different to some bigger, particular European law schools where the students amount is very high. And uh, except for seeing the professor in the classroom, they don't have more interference with students. That is different here at Duquesne. Um, additionally, we offer participation in externships with law firm and the courts as well, and the program runs for two semesters and it always starts in fall uh, to run in schedule with the classes that we are offering at the law school. Another last but not least important reason is Duquesne's Center for Global Engagement. You already got to know some of our uh, staff there, which is very welcoming, very nice. So let's move to the next slide. Thank you, Sarah. So I wanted to explain you our two different options when you pick the LLM program. One is the general track and the other is the bar track. So the general track is a track that you can take if you're more interested in just gaining a general understanding about uh, U.S. Um, legal systems and don't intend to sit for the bar in any of the states. So the difference is that the general track cur curriculum only requires 24 credits, while the bar track curriculum requires uh, one credit more, 25 credit credits. Both programs run for two semesters. And the general track curriculum, the grading is pa or based on pass and fail. And you can also require extra time or dictionary help for being a non native speaker. This does not work for bar track curriculum. You are graded similar to the USJD candidate student. For both curriculums, you can participate in externships and in have a mentor relationship. And uh, in both um, curriculums, you receive a master of law as a degree. However, for the bar track curriculum, since you're graded similar to JD students, you can actually be awarded with an honors for your master of law degrees. And then, of course, uh, you cannot sit for the bar in the general track curriculum because you don't um, for 
fulfill the requirements to sit for the bar and for the bar track curriculum, you are permitted in certain states to sit for the bar. If that is your intention, um, you kindly inform yourself um, before you start the program which state you like to sit for the bar because every state has different requirements to make sure that you fulfill the requirement during your time at the law school. So this is a little bit an overview about the curriculum that we offer and both a wonderful and great experience uh, to participate at the law school. And last but not least, yes, I just want to point out the faculty accessible because that's a major uh, point for going to a school like Duquesne. Um, there are some ratings and where, you, where students have been asked how their ratings, accessibility of professors and their teaching. And as you can see, the Duquesne Clients Law School is um, rated very high in 95% out of uh, the highest is 100. And that's um, uh, very good to know and very interesting for students, particular for non-native and uh, students who like to have a closer relationship to the teachers and professors that they're working with. So with that, um, I'm handing it over to um, my colleague Maureen. Hi, welcome everybody. My name is Maureen Stoken. I'm Assistant Dean of Admissions at the Thomas R. Klein School of Law at Duquesne University. So I'm very pleased to be presenting to you today, and I'm going to talk to you about the application process. Uh, so we can look at the slide. So in this, in the U.S., all of the law schools uh, that you're going to be looking at are approved by the American Bar Association. That's our accrediting division. And uh, so we are looking for students who have a background in law from whatever country they're from. Typically, we're going to be looking for programs like the LLB in order to be uh, able to apply for this program. The LLM application um, is gonna be similar, if you're familiar with the common application that undergraduates use, it's similar to that. All students to ABA approved law schools will apply through the Law School Admissions Council, the LSAC. And so when you go to our website, you will find that we send you right to the LSAC when it's time for you to apply. So you'll submit the application there, all of your documents will be sent there, and then we will receive that application once it, it is ready for review. Some of the things that you are required to submit, we require that you participate in what's called the Credential Assembly Service, CAS, through the LSAC. That just means that they will set up the application, they will collect all the documents and put it in the format that we'll receive. So that is a requirement. You'll also need to complete a credential evaluation. Um, if you, uh, if your education was completed in English, then that's great. Then we'll accept those through the credential assembly service. But if it was in a language other than English, then you're going to need to have that translation provided also. Uh, we do require a TOEFL or IELTS score. And later on, I'll tell you exactly what we're looking for there. You have to send transcripts from all institutions that you've attended. Sometimes there's confusion about this. Students will say, well, that a uh, course I took at another school will appear on this transcript. We need all the original transcripts. We require one letter of recommendation. We suggest that that be from a faculty member or professor who taught you in college or in graduate school. But for some students, maybe you've been out of school for many years. And so in that case, we can be a little more flexible and we'll accept a letter of recommendation from a supervisor. That's somebody that knows your intellectual ability, your work ethic, and other pertinent things about you and can describe those things in the letter of recommendation. We require that you submit a current resume or CV, and that's important to us. Um, so you'll wanna make sure that you work on that. If you're not familiar with the format that is typically used in the US, we can help you by providing copies of those. We also submit a personal statement. We want to know why are you interested in this program? What are your goals? Tell us a little bit about your background. Uh, so that can be, it, those can vary greatly from student to student. Okay, we'll go on to the next slide. Okay, application deadlines are important. So our application always opens on September 1st every year. And the priority application deadline 
is March 15th of this year, 2023. Applications received after the priority deadline will be considered on a space available basis. So we encourage you to get that application in as early as possible. You may submit the application before you have all of the documents complete. You can still submit that uh, to us and that's fine because you know, we can help you to determine what's still missing and what you need to do. Okay, we'll move on. The TOEFL and IELTS. So we wanna assess your language ability. The uh, legal education is very rigorous and there's a lot of information. There's a vo high volume of reading and research. So we wanna be sure that you are ready to be successful in this particular program. So the scores that we're looking for, we're looking for an overall score of 90 on the TOEFL and seven on the IELTS, but certainly we're gonna look at the individual uh, sub scores or bands for each of those tests. All candidates must successfully complete a, an interview with the Office of Admissions. We do that via Zoom. And once the application is submitted, I'll reach out to you to set up that interview. You'd be speaking with me and we would uh, spend about 30 minutes talking generally and um, learning more about each other, okay? The credential evaluation um, is a very important part of this because we're a small institution. We wanna be sure that we have uh, all of the detailed information about your background academically. And the best way for us to retrieve that is through the credential evaluation. Uh, LSAC, the agency that will be collecting your application, they do provide a service, but we also will accept WES, ECE, Spantran, Scalero, and NACES affiliated evaluators. So if you have any questions about that or about a credential evaluation, maybe that you've already had done, you can always reach out to us at lawadmissions at duq.edu. Any questions you have may also be submitted through lawadmissions at duq.edu. We're always willing to assist you, okay? So costs are gonna be very important. Uh, for many of you, your education um, has been free or very um, minimal cost. So you're gonna have some sticker shock when you look at the cost of an education in the US. Our tuition is listed here. Uh, there are fees and we, and we try to give you a realistic idea of what you're gonna spend on books and other supplies. Uh, your living expenses, as uh, Sarah mentioned previously, uh, we have a very reasonable cost of living in the Pittsburgh area, but this may be, you know, a little bit different than what you're used to. We also add in the visa and travel uh, costs to come up with the total cost of attendance. We do have merit scholarships available. That's another reason that it's important to submit the application as early as possible so that you can be considered for uh, the merit scholarship pool of money that we have. The later you apply, um, the more chance that that's, that money, that scholarship money will already have been awarded. Okay. Okay. So now I'm going to hand this back to my colleagues in global engagement so they can tell you about immigration. Thank you so much. That's great information. And I know we're going to have questions. So uh, thank you very much for presenting. Uh, Dr. DeCrosta, if you want to jump into with any comments on the immigration and opportunities, we, with this opportunity with the LLM program, the students will be coming to the United States under the F-1 visa. So this specific visa has a lot of benefits that come along with it that are much different than perhaps if you traveled to the United States before under a tourist visa. So you, you will be required to come in under the F-1 visa, but that comes with a lot of great uh, benefits. So as I said before, the Center for Global Engagement works with all accepted students to prepare the required documents for the I-20, which you will use to apply for the F-1 visa. The F-1 visa allows you to stay in the country for the whole time, the whole duration of your program. You won't have to leave at any point, but you will be able to leave if you desire. Of course, um, if you're going on a trip or something and, and you have the visa to allow you to go to another country. But the most important benefits of the F-1 visa are the CPT and the OPT opportunities. So under this program uh, was mentioned that you are able to do internship or experience opportunities. So the CPT program 
is allowing you to participate in those. And if perhaps if they are paid, you are also able to, to make money and accept payment as well legally with the F-1 visa. And you would work with our office to apply for that CPT. It's very easy to apply onto your I-20 and uh, at a very uh, straightforward process. The OPT is a little bit more complex, but the benefit is great. So what OPT is, is it allows you to work for one year after you finish this program. So it doesn't matter if you're on the bar track or on the uh, general track, you would still be able to work in the United States for one year if you apply for this OPT opportunity, but you would have to work in the in the field of law so that it is required that you have a job in your field of studies, but you'd be able to work in the United States for one year and that would be on the F-1 visa so you would not have to reapply for a new visa, uh, which is really what makes it a little bit more complicated for working in the United States. So for those of you who are professionals, uh, that would be a great uh, addition to your work experience for those of you who are just coming out of school, a great opportunity for you to, to build your resume. And I would say, you know, this is a wonderful benefit for international students. Because this is only a one-year program, you would have the opportunity during that time to do intern internships, excuse me, through your immigration um, approval. So our office, as Sarah said, would work with you on that. We have an immigration advisor dedicated to help you through these requests. Um, and if you had any questions um, regarding the process, you could always email us at intladmissions at duq.edu. That's international admissions, I-N-T-L admissions. Um, but we're here to help you through all the the steps of that process as well. I think that you're getting a sense of all the support that you're going to receive if you attend this program. So our Center for Global Engagement, a group of experts in the area of international students will be available to you. At the law school, we also have an Office of Career Services that you will also be able to access. So if you are looking for uh, that OPT opportunity, we're certainly going to help you with that. We know all the employers uh, will help you to develop the application, the resume, whatever it is that you need if you decide you want to pursue OPT. Yeah, and I wanted to reiterate that point as well, Maureen, is I think that um, you'll find that you have a number of different forms of support here on campus. I mean, beyond our office and the law school, um, if you were to come here as a student, um, we find it very important, you know, that student service is very important. And um, our mission at the university is to serve students as, as our primary goal here. So I think that you would find between the location in Pittsburgh, um, it's access to the different legal aspects of the city and the county and the state and the nation right close to our campus, as well as all of these wonderful employees and professors that you'd have access to. And Ed, I just wanted to, you know, pass it on to you as well to see if uh, you'd like to add anything, especially um, if we're if some of our agent guests on the call um, have any questions about how this might work for them. Well, certainly the application itself will run through Accelerate. So any of our agent guests on the call are going to be familiar with Accelerate through Educa. Um, you'll have our RM system. You know, all of our offshore coordinators are going to be kind of fully up to speed on this program. All of them will receive this, um, this, this show that we're, we're recording right now. So um, any questions for them, you know, just kind of forward those questions through our international admissions office, they'll be disseminated to me and then I can work with anybody individually if you've got students or a cohort of students that are interested in more information. Thank you. I have a question from uh, some of the representatives that I work with uh, that I can propose to our law uh, colleagues here. So if you could describe the student that would be going into each of the tracks, perhaps you can present what what you would imagine as the type of student that's appropriate for each track, because I think uh, for, for our uh, students, our prospective students, and also our colleagues working in education, it's important for them to understand really how uh, prospective students could, could fit into this. 
Go ahead, can, do you want to take that? I can, yes, I can take that. So the um, bar track is particular for students who might have the intention to stay in the US, to work as a lawyer in the US, or to work as a lawyer in their home country, but be able to go to court in the US to have an admission to uh, the bar in the US. As a general curriculum is more for students who want to gain the experience of studying abroad, wants to get the LLM degree, which is uh, appreciated in uh, European countries and Asian countries as an additional um, degree for students to prove knowledge of a foreign legal system, uh, knowledge of uh, speaking fluent English, and uh, getting um, better job possibilities than other students. So that's kind of the track where you have to thinking what what you like to do in the future with your title. Do you like to add something, Maureen? Only that the majority of the students who have completed our LLM program have done the bar track curriculum. That's uh, that's really important to understand. And and how uh, how long do you expect the students to prepare for the bar after the, this program is finished? I can take that one. So we have a formal bar prep program here at the law school where we help students to um, to prepare all along the way so that they can do some um, practice with within the law school. We also have alumni mentors who will work with students as they prepare for the bar. So we'll do some of that while the students are in the program, they can learn about it. And then the bar formal bar prep will start right after graduation in May. And those students will, you know, our LLM students are a part of our commencement in May when the students graduate. And then the bar exam is typically held at the end of July. And so that's typically the timeline that they will be working on. Most students are gonna be preparing full-time on the bar exam, but we do have a part-time program. And so some students here work full-time and they will be preparing in their off hours for the bar exam. Thank you, that helps so much with our, our students. And also uh, with our office, we would work with you on, on the immigration requirements to, to be able to fulfill those those bar requirements and study hours as well. Well, I don't have any more questions. I, I have one. One question yeah. that we've received is where do students live? And since you're coming from such a distance, um, although, you know, sometimes law schools and graduate schools, um, we won't assign you housing, we certainly can help with that. So here at Duquesne, we have two opportunities for you to live right on campus. One is a private high rise and one is a university residence hall. Uh, so we'll certainly tell you about that. We also work with an app called Very Apt, V-E-R-Y-A-P-T, where working with our current students, they develop um, a list of opportunities for places to live around the area. Because we're in this urban area, you can live within walking distance of the campus. Um, you can live a short public transportation bus ride away from campus or a subway ride. So we'll provide all of that information to students. That's really important information. Uh, it's certainly a nervous time to come abroad, but knowing that you have a, a good place to stay makes all the difference. Wonderful. We have the contact information on the screen here. I know that all of us are very welcome to receive your questions more direct questions, uh, especially if you're watching this as a video, you can feel free to reach out if it's something was unclear to you, uh, connect to anyone that is, is appropriate, and uh, we'll get it to the right, the right people. Any final comments? I just think this is a wonderful opportunity for international lawyers. Um, as you could see, we're reviving the program, and so we certainly hope to be able to work with you if you are interested. Um, feel free to contact us with any questions and, and thank you all for attending.